Let's get that Altar Luffy. Where's the Altar Luffy? Come on, buddy. Yo. Got three more boxes of Kingdoms of Entry. That's it. This is it for the the Shrippum series. Once this is done, then I'll have been done opening set four. And I was kind of telling the story about um, you know how I got into cards and how you know I got into printing cards and making cards and and I think really in this video I'd like to just talk about what I think about cards today. Bless them. So. You know, as I was mentioning, I was really into Japanese woodblock printing. And Japanese woodblock printing was a very interesting uh, type of art, style of art, time of art, because Japan was really like closed off to the world before the Edo period in the mid, mid to late 1800s. And there's our BB, just like that. Um, and after Japan opened uh, its doors to the rest of the world, um, you know, stuff really started changing around there. The influences, inspirations became a lot more global than having just been from Japan previous to that. And uh, you see a lot of this in the art. And what's cool about Japanese woodblock printing was it kind of came from a need of our desire of people wanting to have some level of cultural access that they didn't have previously, right? So like it was really just people that were pretty rich that could buy art and common folk couldn't really buy or afford art. But when woodblock prints came around, it became a lot more accessible to buy inexpensive prints and art of things that you liked. So um, that was something that I think people started getting a lot more of. And um, what's interesting about Japanese trading cards is they kind of align with that in a similar way, where I think trading cards are a window of access for people. The majority of them are Japanese, and it's kind of a... Uh, a cultural window of access for people around the world that maybe can't go to Japan or maybe they do go to Japan and these are things that they just like to acquire that give them this window into the culture that they can look at and appreciate because at the end of the day they're just pieces of paper with ink on them but these pieces of paper with ink on them have such a huge ability to like evoke this emotional response that we have to the things that we're looking at um, so you know I think in a way Japanese woodblock prints are very similar to Japanese trading cards in that they're kind of the modern manifestation of that. And that's actually why I put the great wave on the back of all my cards. If you guys have seen the cards that I make, I put this uh, I put this print by Hokusai on my Jolly Roger there with my dental instruments and stuff. So that's kind of a reference to, you know, what I believe these trading cards are uh, relative to the history from which they come. And, as you know, I mentioned in a previous video that um, woodblock printing was actually like the, where manga and anime came from because uh, manga, uh, anime, manga was coined by this guy, Hokusai, who made that image. And there's a lot of uh, similarities you can draw. I think Oda actually incorporates a lot of Japanese art history into the way in which he draws, into the way in which he produces stuff. And I'm sure he saw the connection between these things as well. I know he was very involved in the making of this game, so I think you know, being able to see that and recognize, um, I know he has a real appreciation for art um, in what he's making. It's kind of cool that we're at the, you know, real time manifestation of the way that this stuff has come together. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, uh, wait, we should be coming up on a hit re really soon right here. I think it's in this one. Oh, pack them, you bless them, shrip them. Like that, is that how you do it? Let's get that alt art Luffy. Where's the alt art Luffy? Come on, buddy. Yo. Yo. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is the card I wanted to pull so badly. Second to last box. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. And then I just have to open this pack because this is just the last one. That was, that was wild. That was wild. That was absolutely wild. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's one box left. So I think I've pretty much pulled every hit that I've wanted. Obviously the the alt art Sabo or the manga Sabo would be cool, but I'm not holding my breath here for that for that guy. That might be a pickup, it seems. Um, but yeah, let's get into this last box here. That was wild. That was insane. I I feel like 
the heart of the cards is like something people say, like, oh, you're, you, uh, you know, you put your energy into something and make it, uh, like, get the luck of the cards. But I think it's more like when you really love something, you believe in it. You start to give it a heart. And I, I love this game. And I think I've given my heart to this game. And I think this game from time to time gives me its heart when I'm opening it. Some sets like me more than others, I think. Set 1 really liked me a lot. I also bought the most of Set 1, so no wonder why it liked me the most. But uh, yeah, sometimes I think if you just really put your, put your, wow, Diamante, that is sick. Um, yeah, if you really just put your energy into these things, you can, uh, you know, you can find what you want from them sometimes. I don't think, I think there might be an alt leader in one of these, I don't know where or how it would come up. And there also should be one of the, possibly one of those alternate art, alt arts, but this case was pretty slim. I mean, I got both the alt art secret rares, which I didn't have, and the alt art Luffy, that's just like, too hype. But I'm gonna crack through the rest of this box. I hope you all enjoyed this series. You know, I'm, I'm really interested in this stuff from a lot of different angles, and it's really fun for me to be involved with it. I love, uh, love the interaction I get to have with y'all, and, um, you know, managing a couple different things that so sometimes takes me a little, oh, queen, it's the blue yellow leader. Very cool, very, very cool. I don't think this leader's that good, but it is blue yellow, so I do like to pull that. But uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching these shrippums. I am Joku DMD, and I'll see y'all. Oh, I'm a dentist, I can't end without a dental tooth tip. The tip of your tooth, you've heard this one probably, is the tip of the crown, or the tip of the apex, because there's two sides, so if you say top or bottom, it's relative, because your teeth change the direction there, so you have to talk relative to something. So the tip of the root is referred to as the apex, and the tip of the crown is referred to the top of the crown, and size of ledge or cusp tip. And that's your dental tooth tip of the day. Thanks for checking out. Sankyu, gozaimasu, and I'll see y'all.